It's quite funny really, when I was doing this project, I was watching this playthrough of somebody playing that new Star Wars game. I don't remember the name of that, that game anymore. But I think that really impacted the design as well, because it looks like something you'd find in Star Wars. Kind of that subconscious uh, thing going on there. But yeah, this project really started off, uh, I found, like I used my Swiss Army knife quite a lot. My granddad actually bought that for me for my birthday 15 years ago, which is quite a long time. And it got me thinking like, it's very good for certain use cases, but a lot of the tools on there, I don't really utilize anymore. And what if we design our own multi-tool, right? Like what would that look like a modern multi-tool? And it really started off as like this um, digital Swiss army knife. But then I thought about what kind of things I really like doing and the things I really like doing is taking stuff apart and then building stuff out of those components. So most of my usefulness kind of comes from measuring stuff. So one of the first things I really wanted to incorporate into it was uh, some form of tape measure so that when I'm sitting at the desk setup, I can actually just quickly measure something out, something that I'm wanting to buy on the on the web, so to say, and then figure out like, okay, will it fit in the desk setup, for example, will it fit over there? The second thing I really wanted to integrate is some form of drill, because often when I'm 3D printing stuff and I'm adding bolts to that 3D print, I make them just small enough to where it threads into the 3D printed component, and you really need a drill to push it through as it heats up and then it kind of melts a uh, thread into that 3D printed component. Initially I thought like buying one of those electrical precision screwdrivers and taking that apart and implementing it, but the electronics on those are really small and quite difficult. I still had this drill from Bosch which would also work but it's quite large so I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. Yeah I wanted to take it apart anyway because I was really curious as to how it actually worked as when you press it in it also activates the motor. So that entire motor segment is separate from the PCB and when you press it in it has springs between there and it activates that button which immediately got me thinking like it would be really nice to have two separate inputs so it's like really comfortable to hold in multiple different configurations. At this time I didn't really have a 3D scanner yet so I also wanted to implement a radius gate set and a caliper as those are the main two tools that I would use for a reverse engineering project and I found this tiny little caliper on Amazon alongside this radius gate set and that just allows us to determine the corners of, of stuff, so to say. So if you have a randover on something, you can detect like how big that randover is so that you can model your 3D prints around it. The first thing I do in these kind of reverse engineering projects is take the original shell, see how they mounted it, and then base my design off of that. Because there's a lot of things that you don't think about when you're trying to mount something yourself where the initial designer had thought about it because they ran into some kind of issue. So sometimes it's good to just take it step by step and not think about the big picture, so to say. Because when you see everything as a whole, you think like, oh, it's so much work to do that thing and that thing and that thing. But when you just like blindly go forward, it's a lot easier. And then in between those steps, also 3D printing those components, uh, just to check like, it, does it fit, you know? Initially I was designing this case which would enclose the entire component and wouldn't really show off anything as to how it worked or, or whatever. And that resulted in quite a lot of issues. I was having this mental block, so to say. Uh, I gave it a rest and the ne next morning I came back to this thing. I was thinking about a Star Wars playthrough that I watched the night before. And I thought that the internals of that drill actually look like something you'd find in Star Wars without it, you know. If I put a casing around that, that would be kind of a shame. So eventually I decided to just keep those parts completely exposed and not worry too much about how it was going to look initially. Eventually I ended up with this design where the battery mount is on the other side because we don't need that function anymore where we press it in and it starts driving the bit. That's like probably the most frustrating part about that Bosch drill actually. So I'd rather like reuse that button and make it turn it into something different. At this moment in time, there's also like a lighter in the position where I actually want the radius gauge set to be. But I couldn't really figure out where to place the light and the radius gauge set. So if you enjoyed the video so far as well, definitely consider subscribing. If you don't subscribe, then you might never see another one of my build videos because it doesn't end up in your suggested feed and you might miss something. Uh, this was right around that time where I upgraded my 3D printer with a time-lapse tool. And that meant I also had to switch to a different slicer, so I had to switch to Cure. The prints that came out of this thing were so much higher quality, I was quite amazed by it, to be honest. And also with the support structure removal on the Creality slicer, 
it basically becomes impossible to remove support structures. On this one, it's really easy. Is you know, use my uh, EDC multi tool and it just snap them off, and it became a really relaxing process for me. After this, I checked it out again, uh, made sure that all the components would fit. There were some slight issues with it, where the battery compartment wasn't large enough, so there would be kind of a slight rim over there, and it put quite a lot of strain on the PCB. I made some adjustments in the CAD program, and then I sent it off to the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. They sponsor a lot of really awesome videos on the channel, so you know, special thanks to them. Uh, they offer kind of a lot of services which relate to prototyping things like CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, PCB production and assembly, and of course also 3D printing. Usually I print it in resin in UTR black, but this is a multi-tool and sometimes it's going to drop and it's going to, you know, be in situations that resin might not survive. So I checked out some of their other options and they also offer this nylon printing service which uh, is supposed to be very drop resistant and yeah, I chose that. Also made sure to print it in resin there. This time in white because I was probably influenced by the Star Wars playthrough and I thought it would look like a Stormtrooper device or something like that. But I uh, got those prints in a couple days later. As always, print quality is really awesome. I was really surprised by the nylon uh, stuff. I, I don't know how they do that, but it feels... It doesn't feel like TPU or anything, but you can feel that it's softer than a resin print, for example. And so therefore it's like less brittle. So it felt really solid. In terms of the resin version that we printed in white though, I wasn't too big of a fan of that one because all the other components are black and it doesn't really match up with it. But if you want to see that version with all the components installed, you can follow me on my Instagram account and I'll upload a picture there. The design that we ended up with eventually was pretty simple, like there's this triangular button which has like a spring in there and that just activates the second button which was initially used for the, for the pump action activation thing. And there's also like another button on the other side where you can switch the modes and that kind of stuff. The most infuriating part of this process was trying to get the tape measure in there because it has internally, it has this extra piece which is kind of like a spring, like a makeshift spring, and that holds the actual tape measure, which I never really understood. I thought those were like one and the same thing, but it appears it wasn't. I tried to get it in there like three times and every time I'd put the other components in there as well, I'd mess something up and then the whole thing would like kind of explode. You'd have to do the whole process again of like winding it up and putting it back into the uh, 3D printed piece. The radius gauge sets are basically connected with a bolt that goes from the inside. So you have to attach that one before you actually clamp the whole shell together. I'll leave a link to the radius gate set that I purchased in the uh, description down below alongside all of the other tools that I've used for this project. I often just provide the STLs for free because it's quite an invasive project where you have to take a lot of things apart and I don't feel it's like um, a printer and you're finished kind of deal. Like you have to get yourself invested into this thing if you want to want to make it for yourself. Next we inserted some of these magnets which hold the bits in place. And on the other side is a place for a, uh, like a tiny little caliper, which I haven't really talked about up until this point. It's not the most accurate thing, but you know, I've used it quite a few times up until this point and it's accurate enough to where, you know, it doesn't really matter for like a simple free print. But that is the number one thing that I keep losing. The, the caliper is just always somewhere and then I see it and then when I need it, it's not there anymore. That's kind of the, the point of this. But because it's made of brass, it won't connect with magnets. So I made a special system where you slide it into a slot and then that holds it together. When you're using it, your hand is wrapped around it anyway, so it doesn't really fall off. Yeah, that was it for this project. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you would build if you'd make your own EDC tool. What kind of EDC tool would it be? Like, what kind of components would be in there? And hopefully, see you in the next one.